One of the things I love the most is figure skating. I've been doing it since the age of two. Over the summer, I started skating with a new partner in ice dance. At first, it seemed amazing, and I remember being so happy. I love the feeling of skating with a partner, having to feel and not look when the other person is stepping so you're in sync. It made me feel special. That was over the summer. Pretty soon is my first day of sophomore year, and that meant that I'd have to skate before school, meaning getting up at 3.30 every morning, skate for two hours, go to school, off ice, and skating again after school, and then homework while trying to get to bed at a decent time. I slowly started to go downhill, and I only started to notice I already reached the bottom. I started to go into depression and had a nervous breakdown every night. It was easy to hide behind the fake smile, but behind that lay a battered and damaged me, one who I felt like was losing a bit of herself each day. I knew that I wasn't okay, but I didn't want to give it up either. I love competing and having fun at competitions, and I also didn't want to be seen as a quitter. But finally, one day, I decided to quit skating with my partner. Let me rephrase that. I decided to let go. There is a difference between quitting and letting go. Some may think that was crazy to say goodbye to the ideal picture with a perfect partner who is tall and dedicated to skating. And sometimes I still question my choice. However, I knew that I need to take care of myself first. According to the World Health Organization, over 280 million people in the world have depression, and nearly 60% of mental health is ignored. Having a healthy mindset is important because it increases our ability to regulate emotion, decreases stress and anxiety, helps our ability to focus, and can improve sleep and health. Not enough people realize the importance of having a healthy mindset. Many teens feel the need to do many things and put mental health aside. There is an underlying need to always be doing something, and some people feel ashamed and they relax. Nonetheless, setting some time aside each day to focus on our mental health is really beneficial. Even having at least an hour down time every day will help. You can meditate, do yoga, go outside, or whatever else helps you to relax. It's helpful to see more athletes being open about mental health. One of my role models is Simone Biles. I grew up seeing her in the Olympics on TV and in Uber Eats commercials. It was shocking when she announced her withdrawal from the Olympic Games in 2021. Biles acknowledged that she faced a lot of pressure and needed some time to focus on her mental health. She received a lot of positive feedback such as from former First Lady Michelle Obama, we are proud of you and we are rooting for you. The, di the Director General of the World Health Organization also thought Biles was bright and brave. Similar to Simone Biles, famous Japanese tennis star Naomi Osaka also dealt with similar mental health issues. Osaka also felt the pressure and anxiety that comes with being an Olympian. She said how she had faced depression since the US Open in 2018. And Netflix's Naomi Osaka series, she said how, I feel like you have to be really mentally strong to play tennis. She also admitted how she gets a lot of attention and how it can be overwhelming. Sometimes I feel lonely, she said. When Osaka quit the French Open to protect her mental health, she received a lot of negative criticism. While it may seem disappointing to some fans when their favorite Olympic athletes withdraw, it is really important for them to protect their mental health. Like Osaka tweeted, athletes are humans. After hearing about these athletes, it made me think about my own story. I felt better knowing that there are others out there who shared a similar story to mine. Success is not just about winning or the gold medal. It's what you make it to be. True success comes from within. It's about being happy and healthy. To me, that's the real gold medal. 
So how do you know when to let go? It can be really hard to let go of something you love. I knew I wanted to quit for some time, but I loved it so much that it made the decision really hard. I knew both would hurt either way. Letting go is hard because you're giving something, someone up that has become a part of you. And it's part of what makes you who you are today. It can be difficult to let go of that part from your past. As hard as it can be to let go, some helpful signs in knowing wins you can be. When the bad outweighs the good, you're not happy, it's not healthy, or you want different things. But after you let go of something, how do you move on? One of the hardest parts about leaving something can be the thought about what comes afterwards. Or you can't imagine what your life would be like without it. In reading about this topic, I found many suggestions of steps people can take moving on. Some of the steps I thought were helpful are reflect realistically. Think about the situation you're in. Sometimes you look back and only remember the good things. This makes us forget about the bad things, and we question whether we've been able to go on. One way to move on can be to make a list of all the negative things about the situation. This can make us remember that it was for the best. Feel the feelings. After moving on, you might feel, experience a bunch of feelings, such as sadness, anger, or hurt. These feelings can be overwhelming, but they'll eventually dissolve. Acknowledge your feelings, but don't hang on to them. Instead, try to focus on creating positive feelings. Talk about it. After moving on, you might feel stuck or have mixed emotions. Talking about your feelings with a friend, family member, or therapist can help. And lastly, believe in yourself. Sometimes a person might blame the situation they're in and why it went wrong on themselves. Believe in yourself and that the situation you're in was not your fault. This will help you be able to move on faster and have the strength to create a new future. Although we can't be certain which option is right, we need to make sure that we let go to protect ourselves. There will always be more paths to choose, new beginnings, new opportunities. Look at your life as a journey with many different roads to take. Some roads will be windier than others, but when one road ends, there will always be another. I thought my story would end here, but it turns out that's just getting started. I'm still skating on my own, and I'm working to get stronger. I can't wait to see what happens next. Thank you.